this is John from Remotify.io and in this Control Surface Studio tutorial I'm going to show you how to add your own custom red box in Ableton Live. Used by MIDI controllers such as the APC40 and Ableton Push, red boxes are a popular part of Ableton Live. They give you the ability to control the clips and mixer parameters of multiple tracks in live with one set of inputs on your controller. It means you can access your entire session even with a small MIDI controller. Your inputs are always relative to the position of the red box. If for example, you're using an encoder to control the volume of the first track in the red box, if you move the red box, your encoder stays relative to its position and still controls the first track inside the red box, rather than track 1 of the session. Red boxes have traditionally only been available for a small selection of MIDI controllers. The only way to make your own used to mean delving into Python programming which, as you're here, I'm guessing you don't want to do. Control Surface Studio, however, gives you the ability to add a red box for any MIDI controller. And you can do things such as set the width and height of it, you can set custom LED feedback for its clip states, and even connect multiple red boxes together for different controllers, and move them together as though they're one giant controller. Let's hop into Control Surface Studio, and I'll show you how to add one. For this tutorial, I'll be creating a red box for my Launchpad S, but this works with any MIDI controller. First I'll create a new script and call it Redbox Script. Select Launchpad S as the controller and add a mode. We call the Redbox a Session Box in Control Surface Studio and to add a Session Box we simply select the Session Box Mapping type from the menu. Without doing anything else I'll quickly install this into Live and see what we've got. When I activate this script in my preferences, you can see that we now have a red box displayed. Currently it's only two scenes high. I would like it to be four scenes high. So I'll switch back to Control Surface Studio and set scenes to four, then install that and reload my session. Now the box is four by four. Currently the box doesn't do anything, so next I'm going to set up the pads on my launch pad to control the box's clips. To do this, I add a pad from the menu for each clip, or I can select them directly from the MIDI controller area. I'll also add pads for scene launch track stop and stop all. I'll install that and reload my live session. Now when I press my pads it fires the clips within the box. The default LED feedback for clips is a bit rubbish. I would prefer to set my own colours to display when the clip is playing and stopped. If I switch back to Control Surface Studio and scroll down there is an LED feedback section which has options for all of the various clip states. I'll set the option when a clip is playing to display green on the launch pad. And when a clip is stopped, I'll set it to display red. I'll also set a clip to display yellow when it's triggered to play. And some colours for my scene launch buttons, stop track buttons and stop all. I'll install that and reload my live session. Now the clips are using my own custom colours for their various states. If a clip slot has no clip then it will use either the controller's default LED off value or the script's global LED off setting depending on your setting. See our tutorial on LED feedback for more details on how LED feedback works in Control Surface Studio. To move the box, I'm going to use two buttons on my launch pad to move left and right. To do this, I'll add a session box navigation mapping. 
Navigate needs to be set to track. If I want to move the box up and down, I would set this to scene. I'll change select track slash scene number to scroll. If I just wanted to move the box to a specific position when I press my button, I would use select track slash scene number. But I want my button to work like a scroll function. I'll assign this to a pad. I then set it to move the session box left by changing control to custom and control type to decrement. As the on and off options are already using the correct velocity settings for the input, I can leave these as they are. I'll leave switch type set as momentary and set steps to one so for each button press it will move by one track. I'll now copy this mapping and call the copy session box right. I'll then change the controller input to a different pad and set control type to increment which will move the box right. Now if I install this and reload my live session, I can now move the session box left and right. I could also use a knob type control to scroll, but as the launch pad doesn't have one, buttons are a good alternative. Next I'll add some mixer controls. These will stay relative to the position of the box when I move it. If you haven't already watched our tutorial on using tracks with Control Surface Studio, I recommend you do so you understand better how tracks and mixer controls work together. I'll add a new track and make sure that relative to session box is set to yes. Also, I'll add a mute mapping to the track and set it to pad. I'll now install that and reload my live session. When I press my mute pad, the mute of track 1 is turning on and off. But if I move the box right a couple of times, when I press my mute pad, it's now controlling the mute of the red box's first track rather than the overall session's first track. This works with all mappings which are children of track in the mapping menu. The offset settings give you the ability to set the position of the box when it first loads. If I set my session box mapping to an offset position of 2 from the left and 3 from the top, when I install and reload my session, the box immediately jumps to that position. This gives you the ability to move your box to a specific position when you switch modes. Maybe you want to control tracks 1 to 4 in mode 1 and tracks 5 to 8 in mode 2. Or if you set these to N slash A, when you switch modes, they will stay in their current position. For more details on how modes work in Control Surface Studio, watch our modes tutorial. Turning combination mode on, we'll link the box together with any other boxes in live which also have combination mode turned on. I've created a script for my MIDI fighter twister which also has a 4x4 session box. I've also turned combination mode on for it and I've set its offset position to 5 from the left. I'll install this and reload live. Then assign my twister script to the MIDI fighter twister. And now, as you can see, I have two session boxes in my session. If I use the session box navigation buttons on my launch pad, both session boxes move together. I've also added a session box navigation mapping to an encoder on my twister. And when I turn it, it moves both boxes up and down. And my launch pad is still set to move the boxes left and right. You could even have a mode in your script which has combination mode turned off. This would give you the ability to move the red box independently and then switch modes where combination mode is turned on and have everything move in sync again. This opens up a lot of possibilities to combine controllers in your setup which would previously be completely separate from each other. If you found this video useful, please like it and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth tutorials on using Control Surface Studio with Ableton Live.